Richard Ortiz, your host of TheFightersVoice.com. Every Saturday on Radio 1680 AM, voiceography at its finest. Remember, every fighter has a voice. And so does the Smoke Show, Joe Louis Lopez, Fresno Zone. They love him, they hate him, but nevertheless, they want to be him, they want to be next to him. And I have him next to me here in the studio. Right. Joe, the mic's all yours. Tell us all about how Fresno embraces you, how it makes you feel, and how you embrace it back. You forgot, and the women want to be with me. Oh, oh, you heard that right. What's the sound bite on that? that? No, what, what was the question again? I had to get that in. What was the question again? I said, how does it make you feel when Fresno embraces you? And you embrace it back. How does that make you feel knowing that Fresno is in your corner and you're in the corner of Fresno? Oh, it's everything because I grew up here and I love it here. I love everything about Fresno. I was here about people tra talking about they want to get out of here, you know. And at some point when I was younger, I thought, you know, I need to get out of this place. But then when I started to appreciate where I was from and going other places, like going, to, I love the Bay Area. I love going south. You know, I go there for camps. I love it there. But, but when I'm there, I realize I'm homesick. And what I love about Fresno, I love running at Woodward Park. I love running up and down Blackstone. You know, I love things like that, and that's what I start to miss. And I miss being at home. I love the, the spots I go to eat here in town. You know, all that, I love it. Where I go during camp to eat healthy. I love it all. And, you know, Fresno, the people of Fresno, I realize, are what made me. They're, like, they're my, they made my personality growing up in the streets, in the hoods, and even the good people coming out the hood, the, the doctors I've met, you know, the professionals I've met, people like yourself, Brian Williams, the, the police officers, the firefighters, everyone I met, they've helped mold me to who I am like now. Like I'm a much better person than I was before I started boxing. I was getting into trouble, but that also molded me and Fresno molded me. The good and the bad from Fresno molded me and I love it. So what do you say to all the haters that say negative things about the smoke show? I mean, does it even pierce your, 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 your thinking? You know, at first, when it when it first started to happen, it did. I was like, man, that, that, I can't believe that that's really like, you know, like they're really they're, that's really happening. But then it's like you said before. I know they just want what I have, and what I really realize is a lot of the haters are coming from um, the own, the boxing community itself because they don't believe I belong here. Like, how did he get there? You know, people from the outside that are just average fans from Fresno, they appreciate me. They appreciate the smoke show. They appreciate the heartbreak kid. They appreciate Joe Louis Lopez, you know? The they appreciate heartbreak kid. Okay, <laughs> I like that one right there. That's a new one we got to add in there. Yeah, they they appreciate all that. They they appreciate that, you know, the, the swag and everything I do on Instagram, my hashtags, they like it. But the boxing community is where you have other people in my weight class, other coaches. I've even seen other coaches talk down on me. And it's like, why would you do that? Like, you know, I came from exactly. nothing also. Yeah, I didn't start when I was eight or nine years old like exactly. your guys did, but I started from nothing yeah. and I outworked your dude to get here yeah. is what it is. I outwork I didn't act like this all the time. I didn't try to market myself like this. I just got here from working. You know, I always try to surround myself, especially with, with our media, with, with a, an outstanding team. Um, and I'm happy with the team that I had. I mean, as you know, you see different faces and I won't mention anything or who's missing or why, mm -hmm. but... Uh, change is good. You got to embrace change because if you're not ready for change or if you can't take change, then you're in the wrong business. You're in the wrong business because if you think everything's going to be hunky dory, no. You got to continue to learn, continue to grow, and know that certain people in your life aren't who they say they are or the ones that say they are. It's just, hey, it's too complicated to even get in there. That's a whole different segment. We're not even going to talk about that. Let's talk boxing here on 1680 AM. Yay. Hey, check this out right here, man. We got Danny the Swift Garcia, Keith Thurman. Who do you have and why? <sighs> You know, I've got, because no one's taking him and everyone wants him to lose, i got Danny Garcia because he's got I've the got ability. I've got Danny Garcia. You do too? I've yeah. got, I believe and he's I'll got the him. ability to, I've got, I believe he's got the uh, ability to beat Keith Thurman. A, I believe he can outbox Keith Thurman. I've seen it against Lucas Matisse. Yeah. That was one of the best five. Once yeah. he did that, I was like, oh, this dude's here. But then after that, his competition level fell off. Yeah. If he fights him like that and he throws that vicious left hook that he almost yeah. took Amir Khan's head off with and many other guys, I forgot yeah, I like the other that. dude he fought. Once he throws that vicious left hook, and if he catches Keith Thurman, I think he'll drop Keith Thurman, or he could outbox him. If he comes in with that game plan, and I believe in Danny Garcia, I like him, and I'm picking him because of, he's a fellow Latino, and I believe in him, and, I've, and I liked him when he was fighting on solo boxeo before anyone even knew who he was. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I think he'll, the second half of the fight is definitely uh, Danny Swift Garcia. Now I want to talk about another fight coming up. It's been signed. Uh, I don't agree with the catch weight, but nevertheless, I'm not the one in the ring. You got Chavez Jr. versus Carnelo at a catch weight of 164.5. We're asking at a full-blown uh, light heavyweight now. Full-blown. Yeah. I I'm thinking. He right. has to come all the way down to 164.5 pounds. That's Chavez Jr. Who do you have and do you agree with the catch weight? I have Canelo, just on pure... Um boxing ability 
and he's probably gonna outwork Chavez at overall. You know, Chavez is tough though, and I do not agree. I, I'm fine with the cash weight. Wherever you want to fight, you fight. It's like MMA. Like look at Connor going up and down, just making yeah, super fights. I love that. Legit. Just you gotta make a fight, make it. You know, wherever you want. If it's 163, 165. 166 if wherever you forget these weight classes if there's a super fight to be made make it i don't i'm fine with that but what i'm not fine with in that is that canelo can't fight triple g at 160 but he could fight chavez jr at 164 it's i don't get that and the money was seemed to be right between both of them where yeah. we know canelo's the cash cow now he's yeah. the new mayweather he yeah. was going to get most of the money yeah. triple g was going to fight him and he's not fighting him and they're at a point in their career where they're both red or oh, triple g's been ready yeah um canelo's ready to fight i mean if he was ready to fight mayweather he's ready to fight triple g and you know what I, i'm i'm gonna keep mine short i'm pulling for the underdog i'm pulling for julio Cesar chavez jr now let's talk about march 10th in lamore california i'm gonna mention a name all the names that are on the bill and i want you to give me an answer uh, okay. what what's the first answer that comes to mind andy vincent's fast and tough that was two <laughs> daniel valdivia he jumps high. <laughs> I like that. Kilo, <laughs> Kilo the Kid Madera. Gritty. Great answer. Saul the Latin Cobra Lomas. Smooth personality. And Madtown Zone from Madera, California, Brian Lua. Special. I like that. I like, that. I, like I like Brian Lua a lot. Those are all great answers. You know, I got to touch about this real quick. Oscar De La Hoya is in the news, and we're not talking about a promotional <laughs> news. No. We're not talking about a fight announcing. We're not talking about coming back out of retirement. But yet, I'm not going to clown the man because no one's exempt from this. It can happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. We seen the DUI yesterday in broad daylight. What's your take on that? What's your comment, Smoke? See, a guy at that level, he's... Uh... Yeah. He's, he's just got a problem. He's got to get it under control. He's had it numerous times, you know. Um, I feel like every, everyone that's been put in that position gets, you know, that thrown their way. You look at Mike Tyson, you get Floyd. It wasn't drugs or nothing, but he still got himself in trouble. But, I mean, man, he's towards the end of his career. He's ready to retire. If that's going to be the case, just get out the spotlight and retire. He's got enough money to get himself out of trouble. Just have fun. If you're going to have fun, get out the spotlight so we're not talking about you like this and, and embarrassing you and bringing your legacy down. Exactly. And you said it right. A man at that level, hey, you could have somebody freaking pick you up, yes. drive your car. Uber. Here's smoke. Here's five hundred bucks. Drive my car here. Yeah. Drop me off here. Do whatever you need to do. I just don't get it, man. At He's that point, that level, yeah, you got to be smart. You got to surround yourself around smart people. But uh, mm -hmm. I do like some Corona. Oh, you know what? We're not giving out free sponsors. <laughs> hey, we're gonna take a commercial break right now. Remember, you're listening to sixteen eighty a.m. The Answer, thefightersvoice.com will knock you out.